12, 1 out of 12, possible 459 suspects there now. 1 out of 12, 1 out of 12, 415, man with a gun. 1 out of 12, no one. Link big straight height at 483. 1 out of 12, 415, fight group. All right, it's really not a presentation. It's a warrant roundup. I thank y'all for showing up. I got a lot of traffic tickets we got to take care of. <laughs> now, thank you so much for allowing me to come up here today. Well, what I'm wanting to visit with y'all about today is a lot of the, the frauds and scams that we are having uh, going through our city. That, that some of the main ones that are really happening a whole lot now. And we're, I'm going to tell you a few things about what you can do to better protect yourself to make yourself a harder target. All right, identity theft it is the theft or misuse of your personal or your financial information. That's about what it is. Anything where they would use it to make other criminal activity. It's a serious crime that can wreak havoc and it can take years and, be, and just play havoc on you emotionally, physically, and just it, and it can ruin your credit history, your reputation, and just be real hard to recover from. Senior scam crime is on the rise, netting $2.6 billion a year. And that was a stat from two years ago. And it is a growing thing, hitting one in five people just in this age group. And these scammers are not just after our senior citizens now. We, they're even going after our high school kids. We've had kids' information get leaked out where it's already, they get, they're getting calls now going, hey, you're behind on your mortgage. And they're still in high school. Their information is getting getting out this happens uh how many of y'all can remember when our parents used to carry their our social security cards on them everything and if the purse got stolen your information was gone some of the top scams the grandchild scam this is where they'll have somebody where they get information online uh, from social media where they're going hey mimi i'm in jail you know, or, hey, Nana, I'm in jail. I need $3,500 in iTunes gift cards to get out. And you would be surprised how many folks will fall for that. And everything Because they won't take care of their grandchild. I walked into Target and I saw an elder, elderly couple at this counter and they were upset. I could tell the wife had been crying. The man was upset. And I walked up to introduce myself because I wasn't in uniform. And and I was off duty, and so I just told them who I was and how could I, could I, could I help them. They said their son was in jail, the grandson was in jail in Houston, and a detective told him he needed $3,400 or $3,500 to get out. And they had came up there and purchased it in Walmart, I mean, in a, a MasterCard type gift cards, those vanilla cards, and then read the man the numbers on it where he could get the money in about 10 seconds. But then the guy told them those cards were blank. So they went up there to buy $3,400 more. And they were upset because they were saying the cards were blank. And, they're, and I said, sir, have you even called your grandson? And they go, no, he's in jail. I said, call him. He was still at college studying for finals and everything. So they'll use family, medical expenses, a lot of these others, investment, bogus contractors where they want to show up going, hey, we will repave your driveway. We're going to paint your numbers on your house where it's more visible for law enforcement and fire department so we can get there quicker. Uh, they're going to use that and they'll go, Hey, but we need the $6,000 up front cash so I can run to home Depot to get the supplies. They'll do that. The bottom two are the main two that are hitting this area really bad. The IRS scam and social security scam. IRS will never call you. They will write you some scary letters, <laughs> but they will never call you. But there'll be folks that will call and say, hey, I'm with the IRS. You're behind on the last three years taxes. There's a warrant for your arrest. You owe $5,000 in back taxes. But if you'll send me $1,000 in these gift cards, I can make this go away today. Keep me on the phone while you drive to Target, CVS, buy these gift cards. They want you to do that. So many folks are falling for it. The Social Security scam. Uh, I've had people even bring these letters up to me at the police department where they're telling them, there's, uh, we found a car that belongs registered to you, Jane, 
on the border, there's evidence of money laundering, cocaine, and uh, other stuff going on, and it's come back to you, and there's a warrant for you. But we can make this go away if you give me $500. And they're using that, and they're going after it. Or they'll tell you, uh, you can't have more than $200 in any account. And somebody may have, we've had, uh, I had one lady here that had, uh, uh, she lost 81000 on this. Uh, and she was so excited to call her son because they had told her, there's a warrant for your arrest. You're going to go to jail unless we take your money. You can't have more than $200 in one account. You need to put all your money on a card and then read us the card number. And we're going to put it in a safety box for you. So that's what she did. And then she called her son and said, I just protected your inheritance. Here's what I did. Everything And the money's gone. These scams are happening a lot. Uh, avoiding health care fraud, never sign. And I'm sorry, I put too much on this. I know on PowerPoint stuff that you shouldn't put more than about five bullets. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I wanted to really throw a lot of information out there. Never sign blank insurance claim forms. We're like when you go to a doctor's office and they're going, hey, just sign this. We will take care and we'll fill it out later. No, their staff can get it filled out ahead of time. Don't ever give somebody just full a blank blanket form. Never uh, give authorization for a medical provider to bill for services uh, rendered. Don't give them just a blanket authorization. Uh, ask your medical provider, if they start charging you for all these things, uh, what can you really be expected to pay out of pocket? They know up front. Carefully review your uh, insurer's explanation of benefits, your, your EOBs. Uh, call your insurance provider if you have any questions. Call them. Don't do business with door-to-door -door or telephone sales uh, who tell you, you know, the, the, the stuff is free because they may say, hey, this is free, but they may charge you for something ridiculous. It's like even some of these movers, they go, hey, we're, we're going to move your move, move stuff for you, but we're just going to charge you for items wrapped. Where they, you know, like they may wrap your couch to protect it. They'll take an individual roll of toilet paper and wrap it so they can charge you for that. That way they can charge you for individual things. So just be careful. Uh, give your insurance and medical identification uh, only to those who uh, provide you the actual services. A lot of people, uh, offices will call you and go, well, we need your social security number to, uh, to look you up or your last four. There's other ways. You go, no, ask me something else. They have other ways. You don't always have to use your social security number. Keep accurate records of all your health care appointments and know if your physician ordered equipment for you. Uh, some services may turn around and want to bill you. They're going, hey, your doctor ordered this. No, he didn't, but they want to charge you something outrageous for it. Know what your doctor is wanting to, you to really do. Okay, some different types of identity theft. What they are, are going on, the actual identity theft, credit card abuse, skimming. The skimming's even changed over the, even in the last four years. Uh, I was, I, what I've been, I work a whole lot with the uh, comptroller's office where we have a, it was a, a ring of Cubans that were hitting our gas stations. And it was mainly both our 7-Eleven stores were getting hit hard. I was getting about six skimmers every two weeks off those gas pumps. And it was just, they could open up, they could pick those cheap locks on those things, put a skimmer on, put the door, close, whoops, close the door and have the security tape put back on it in about 10 seconds. They're doing it that quick because there's like six keys that open up all gas pumps in the state of Texas, and you can buy them online on eBay for about $15. You can even buy the roll of the security tape online. And so they were using that. Uh, like right now, the Murphy store at Walmart has got some new pumps. If the door comes open, it shuts down the pump. It has to be turned back on on the inside. Very good, safe place. Uh, right now with the, the skimmers, they're trying to find new ways around it because it used to be, uh, they've all gone Bluetooth. They would turn around and put a skimmer inside the pump and then they have to come back and take it back out to get your information. Now they have to do, if they put a skimmer on a pump, they can leave it there. And they just got parked with probably within 40 feet away. And if you see somebody sitting in a car in a lap, using a laptop at a gas station, don't get gas there. Cause he's probably sitting right there waiting for somebody to pull up next to the pump and get gas. And he can get your information. He didn't. He, as you put it, your card in the in the slot. He's just got to be within thirty feet. 
30 to 40 feet. Uh, the check fraud, we have had quite a few mailboxes get broken into around here. Everybody thinks stealing mail is a federal offense. We were all told that ever since we were little. It's not. It's what they do with it is what can make it. The, the value, they, they tell us mail has no value. All right. And a lot of these uh, standalone mailboxes in subdivisions are not owned by the post office. They're owned by the HOA. So really all, all the, the criminal is doing is costing the HOA. So it's just the cost of the locks, which could be quite a bit when they do several. Some of the boxes are still owned by the post office. They may even have a postal sticker on it, but it doesn't mean they're really owned by the post office. But it's what they do with your mail is what can make it a, a crime. And if you're 65 and older, it does go up an offense. Instead of just being a state jail felony, it now becomes a third degree felony. All right, it starts getting worse. It, it goes up one each level. All right, and I'll cover more on check fraud here in a little bit. Bank fraud, uh, we have what they, uh, it, we call it jugging. This is where somebody may watch somebody pull up to the uh, a bank and they go in there with carrying a bank bag. So they know they're either gonna come out with cash or something and, and they're not really hiding it very well. And they'll watch them drive off. We've, uh, we've had like, for instance, somebody goes to a bank in Austin, people are watching them. They drive back here, pull up to the HEB to get gas. When they walk up to the window to pay for their gas in advance, somebody's breaking into the car, stealing that bank bag right out of the console where they saw them put it in it. Everything. So it's, at, we call that jugging. And we, we've had quite a bit of that happen in here. The fake and false IDs or, or passport visa fraud. Those are all different types of where they can get your identity. Some personal identif identifiers, your name, date of birth, social security number, driver's license, passports, addresses, phone numbers, your pins, your personal identification numbers. Some financial identifier numbers. Well, that's what's getting into your credit card number, your debit card, bank account, insurance, your pins. All that information is stored on that magnetic strip on your driver's license. It's also on your credit cards, your debit cards, all that information. You can put up to about, there's three lines on there, but you can put it up to about 10 people to 30 people on one credit card. When uh, back on the skimmers, uh, when we would catch some of these folks that were in this ring that were uh, stealing your identity, we'd pull over a truck and there'd be like 30 hotel room key cards in there and they would go oh I collect those they had turned them into credit cards and I could stick it in there and it might have Miss Jane's information on there it might have Miss Jennifer's name on there everything but it, it you know it, it would have theirs I would have to take it back to the office and run them through a card reader to see who they belong to but what it gives me it gives me the card number it won't give me their name but it'll give me the card number I can run the first six numbers of a card and it tells me the issuing bank and they said they had 50 cards. Well, I, I call 50 different banks and say, I need, they, they're not going to give me your information or your contact information. I have to call each bank and say, I'm looking for the owner of this card. Here's the whole complete card number. Will you please contact them, give them my information and have them call me. And I have to do that for all 50 cards. And I have caught people that with 360, 380 odd cards at one time. And that's why I have to call each bank, everything. I might have three out of that 50 that actually will call me the victims. All right. And because what happens is you're covered by your bank's insurance. They're going to give you back your money. As soon as you get a police report, usually three to five business days, bank drops the charges on the criminal because they go, it's not worth them getting going after. But $2.6 billion in a year, you know, because the bank can show it as a loss for tax purposes. And so they drop the charges because you, when you get reimbursed, you are no longer the victim. I like to follow it all the way through. And I still do you as the victim. How thieves are, how, how the thieves are getting your information. Dumpster diving. MasterCard mails their bill out same time every year, uh, every year, every month, excuse me. Uh, you get like your utility bill, uh, stuff that will have your information on there. Or if you got it set up, auto pay or something like that. And they know to start looking in the trash when you throw that away. You just tore it in half. Okay, I paid it. You tore it in half one time, you threw it in trash. 
we will catch people going through trash dumpsters and they can put, they'll go through the bags, put the pieces of the paper together going, they got your complete number. They got your card number and everything. They got your address. They got everything they can use right there to even go open another account. Buying a little shredder, one of the best things. <laughs> they may pretend to work for a company when they call you to try to get you, get information out of you. And they may say they work for social security, work for the IRS. They may work for the bank. Your bank is never going to call you and say, I need to verify your PIN and your account information. But a lot of people will give that out. Email, phishing. I have fallen for this. How many of y'all have opened up an email that you, you didn't know the person or you didn't, uh, you weren't expecting anything from that person? I fell for one at work where it caused a problem with our work computers. <laughs> And then they told me it's bad when our fraud investigator falls for one of these. Well, it was from Wells Fargo and probably 80% of my cases involve Wells Fargo bank <laughs> for some reason. They, the bad guys love Wells Fargo. So I was expecting a subpoena return <laughs> and I saw something from Wells Fargo. I opened it and it was like, all right, you've just been caught, blah, blah, blah. You know, and just, I thought, man, so they said, you got to go to a little three hour retraining deal. And I'm going, that's not fair. I said, I was expecting something from Wells Fargo, <laughs> but yeah, they will, they may say, Hey, open this urgent or there's, there's a problem with your shipment from Amazon, but you haven't ordered anything, but they, what they're wanting is, Hey, we need your address and verify the credit card that you used and people will give it out. Or as soon as you, you allow somebody or Microsoft may send you an email and they didn't even you're not even expecting anything from them, but they're going, Hey, there's a problem with your computer. You need to allow us access to it. And as soon as you do, they can lock it up until you pay them a ransom for it. Or they, or if you got uh, banking information saved on there, they just got access to it. Telephone, uh, with the pretexting, you know, doing things on your phone, same way with using the computer, you get a text from somebody you don't know, or you're looking at social media through your phone and they're just going, oh, you're friends with Jennifer? I go, wait a minute, I've been friends with her for a long time, but now she's sending me another friendship request? Well, she, her account may have been hacked, and now someone's trying to get into me and get my information. Hacking on the internet happens a lot. Uh, one of my cases here is a, a pharmaceutical company we have here in town. Does several hundred thousand dollars worth of business a day, uh, a month. And they were doing business with Lincoln Diagnostic. And their bill for a leaking diagnostic that month was about 219,000. And somebody sent link, they got an email from Lincoln Diagnostics saying, Hey, we changed banks. Here's our new routing number, account number. You need to send your payment to, the, to this. Well, they did. Diagnostic was misspelt in that email. Instead of a D I, it was D little L A. And Lincoln Diagnostic did not get their monthly payment, but somebody else got 219,000. And when that money goes overseas, it's gone. It's gone. Skimming, getting copies, credit card info, using small devices. Uh, ladies, some of y'all may have been to a uh, arts and crafts show where everybody has that, their cell phone got that little box on there. It saves your information. Look at all who you're giving your card to. Did you know that person that you gave your information to? And everything, because every time you hand that card to somebody, they're, they're getting it. You order something online. My mom lives to support Amazon. <laughs> it's like, I should have bought it stock and cardboard. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> uh, the skimming, uh, you go to your favorite restaurant and you give that waiter your card to go walk off and scan it. These skimmers are about the size of, your, of a cigarette, big cigarette lighter or about the size of your thumb. A lot of these waiters get $5 for every card they scan. Then they take that scanner and give it to somebody else and he can make credit cards with all that information. And let's say he scans 50 of those in one day, $5 for each one. He just kind of helped his pay. And now your information's out. Now, when you go to one and they swipe it right in front of you, that's fine. But when you hand it to somebody and they walk off, come back, what if they had a scanner in their, one of skimmers in their apron? You don't know. 
till next month if you're if you're not checking your account three times at minimum three times a week check it three times a week you'll be surprised what will pop up uh you'll you'll see like a one dollar charge sometimes a 46 or 54 cent charge they're just trying it just testing it to see if it'll work and if it works hey they know to go shopping and they like to usually do it on a friday afternoon after the bank's closed so that way they got you all weekend but till the bank notifies you monday that hey you're overdrawn or we had to move money from your savings account over to your checking account to cover the eight thousand dollars you spent you know and just it happens employment ads craigslist wow people that fall for these jobs that go you make make money from home twenty five hundred dollars a month working from home three hours a day but they want you to send them money to make money <laughs> You know, you'd be surprised how many young people fall for that. They go, wow, I'm going to make that just for working this, doing this, or I'm walking dogs, but they're going to hire me to work from home and everything. And it's like, no, it's, they're wanting you to well, send us this money so we can send you a printer, send you a laptop, send you all this stuff. And it's, they're going to hire you, but you got to pay to be hired. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Dating sites. This happens quite a bit. We've had men and women both come to PD during this last year. Everybody's sitting at home because of COVID, not being able to get out. So they got on the computer, going to make new friends. Wow, this beautiful lady from South America is in love with me. And she's probably really a big guy, 300 pounds <laughs> and like that. But they're just used taking pictures off of the internet and putting on there to say, this is me. Be careful who you're talking to. Theft of mail. If you're maybe having work in your house, always hide your checkbook. Maybe you're having some construction done inside your home. Somebody can steal a checkbook out of the back of your check, out of the back of the book. And it's going to be a while before you miss it. I can buy everything up there at Office Max or Office Depot to make copies of your checks. I can get that. It has your account number, has your address, and I can open up accounts, everything right there. Everything that's on that check, it can be used. Everything. So you've got to be careful. Protect your checkbooks. Uh, leave them in your car. Uh, in your car when you're getting a car, your car worked on or something. So make you steal a copy out back of one check. Or, if, or uh, if you had a roommate, maybe steal one when they moved out or something. Uh, BOVs, burglary of a vehicle, just when they break into a vehicle at night. That happens a lot. We have a lot of car burglaries around here. They will pick up as soon as school's out, which tomorrow's the last day of school. <laughs> uh, Crime picks up during the summer. Crime picks up November, right before Christmas starts getting here. More car burglaries, more home burglaries. You know, but that's a whole different other class on making yourself a harder target at home. <laughs> I'll be back for part two. <laughs> but yes, I I can talk about different ways how to make yourself a harder target at your house. Also, security alert. Uh, that goes along with the security freeze. If what you can do, if you become a victim, we want you to notify the, uh, of identity theft, notify the credit bureaus and tell them to put a security freeze on your credit, on your account. That way you are notified if someone goes to use your information or someone applies for credit or goes to rooms to go to buy a new living room suit using your information. It, it gets you, you will get notified immediately. All right. Credit bureaus will require a police report. Banks require a police report in your credit card companies. If you become a victim of a credit card, you call cancel them right away. Call your cards, uh, your card holders, get a hold of them, cancel them. Call us second, get a police report number. I'd always say cancel the cards first. Shut them off, get them, get them shut off quickly. Then call us. We can give you a, re, a, a number over the phone and everything. Uh, a case number, but then there'll be some paperwork for you to do later, everything. And then you can go ahead and call those numbers, these folks back and give them a, uh, a police report. They will require that report number to assist you in getting reimbursed. Now, if you fall for a scam where you give out your information, you're not covered by the bank's insurance because you gave it out freely. But if somebody steals your information, you are covered by the bank's insurance. Your three major credit bureaus, 
those are the ones. You don't have to call all three. You can call one. If they're connected, they will share the information. You call one of them and do it. Now, some things to help you just prevent. And I'm sorry the font is so little. Shred the paperwork. Buy a little $40, $30 shredder at Walmart. A little cross-cut deal. Just tearing it in half and a couple of times is not good enough. It may still leave the whole card number on there. Shred it before you throw it away. Don't carry your social security card or your kids with you in your pocket. You know, and only give it out if it's absolutely necessary, like at the doctor's office or something like that. But I would not give it out over the phone. Don't give out personal information over the phone, through the mail or over the internet, unless you are sure who you are dealing with. If you really believe you're talking to Miss Caroline at the First National Bank, go ahead. But are you sure it's really her? Never click on links on unsolicited emails. Instead, type in a web address you know. Because if you just say, oh, that's Wells Fargo, and you click on it, I should have looked at the complete address. Fargo is misspelled. Don't use obvious passwords. Never use your birthday, last four year social, your address, your last four year phone number, your kid's birthday. Bad guys figure that stuff out. Make sure you uh, use upper and lowercase letters, uh, numbers, symbols, if they would do, allow you on that site to make, it just depends because certain ones, they like you've used a number sign or an exclamation point. Use something unique in your password. Don't eat, but don't use pets' names too because people sometimes post pictures of their pet on Facebook. There are people that are hired just to hack your information and to see what they can come up with. People get jobs to do that, and they figure stuff out on social media. Monitor your accounts daily, at minimum three times a week, because it does not take them long to clean you out. And if you have a checking account with a savings account tied to it, it all it does is keep pulling money from your savings over there to cover what money they're drawing out. Just monitor it daily or minimum three times a week. How can you tell if someone has stolen your information? You start seeing unexplained withdrawals on your account. You, you start seeing money disappearing. You're going, that's not one of my monthly draws. I don't know this person. I don't, I, I've never done business with anybody in Pennsylvania because they'll show an address on your, uh, maybe you got the, the bank app on your phone where you can sit there and check it. I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you, I bank at Bank of America and I got the app and I check mine daily or if I don't my wife is oh you went into Red's gun shop again and yes I'm sorry <laughs> she gets on to me <laughs> all of a sudden you get uh you stop getting certain bills or you start getting other mail and other bills that you don't know anything about you're going I didn't buy $2,200 worth of furniture <laughs> you start getting bills or you start going to some places and they refuse your check or they refuse anything from you because you've been flagged as, you know, you're one of the committing crimes. Debt collectors start calling you for debts that aren't yours. Now, you can run credit reports free on you. I think it's two a year or three, one. Is it once, once a year? Do it. If you haven't done one in a while, do it. Ask to, don't use credit karma. <laughs> do not. <laughs> Go to those, those three major creditors. Yes. Yes, uh, they're all they're all online or yes, you can. And sometimes when when you do call on those eight hundred numbers, you will get somebody with a strong accent, and you're thinking, uh, uh, no. But yes, I'm serious that you'll 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 have some legitimate you know folks working there. You'll call it might be somebody with a strong accent. And you're thinking, oh no, I'm fixing to send my money to Saudi Arabia or somewhere. No, it's they have all sorts of folks working. You you can ask for someone else, do whatever, just do it politely. Uh, and but check it, check your credit. You start finding, uh, when you run your credit, you start seeing other charges you know, or, or things like that, or it's just even on your credit card statement. You know, like I know some people that just live by their card and they just pay it off every month, building up airline miles or something like that to take a vacation later. They just do everything. They pay every one of their bills, gas bill, grocery bill, utility bill, everything on a credit card, but pay it off every month. But then all of a sudden they start saying, Hey, here's this. What's this? What's this? You know, it's something else. 
a medical provider bills you for services you didn't even use. Your health plan rejects you or, or medical claims because uh, records show you've reached your benefit limits. Someone else may be using your information. The IRS notifies you that somebody else has already filed income tax using your social security number. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. You get a notice for your information was compromised by a data breach. Target's been hacked. Uh, wow, over this uh, the Texas Workforce Commission, TWC, I was getting about anywhere from four to seven cases from them a day where Dell employees' information was leaked out, Pflugerville ISD, Austin ISD, Dell Valley ISD, City of Austin employees, City of Pflugerville employees. All our information got leaked. And people are filing for unemployment. Lucky, luckily, I only had got every one of them stopped. Only one of them had checks issued. Now the IRS is sending her letter saying, you owe income tax on that. And she's going, I never even had those checks come here. I told her, do not just drop them in the mail to be mailed up back to them. Take them and hand deliver them back to TWC. Because she said the checks came to her. She goes, I did nothing with them. But I said, if you put them in the mail, somebody was going to try to intercept those. And they didn't. They may be waiting for you to mail them back. Okay, and why I'm talking, well, no, I think it'll, it'll pop up here in a second. Also, or maybe there's a warrant. <laughs> you get arrested for something you didn't do because somebody filed on you because uh, you were doing a lot of charges after a store using their, doing that and you weren't ever paying your bill or something. So somebody filed, that could be a clue. Your identity has been done, but we're not going to come throw you in jail. It would be investigated first. So here's what happens. So if, if whatever happens, freeze or close corrupted accounts. If your bank account gets hacked, your debit card gets compromised from a gas pump or something like that. Call your bank, just close it you don't have to change banks close that account just quit using it stop it then call us and get and file a report get the number i used for the last four and a half years i've been having i've been the only fraud and identity theft investigator for the city we just got two more rookie detectives and they're helping me because i was just getting overran so i love it now we got detective michael sweetland and detective david alkar they're 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 good place fraud alerts on your account that's where you contact the uh, credit bureaus. Get a copy of your credit report. All right. Those card readers I was telling you about, like what the uh, a waiter might have, that's how small they are, like in the palm of your hand. They can have that in a pocket, apron. They're about that size, about the size of a flash drive. And all I got to do is swipe your card through it when you hand it to me. And it stores your information. And what, what is stored on your credit card is your account number, your name, your address, your PIN. That information's on there. On the early model scanners, yes, you can walk up to a gas pump, turn, just turn your Wi-Fi off, take your Bluetooth off, turn it back on. If it shows it's trying to connect to a phone number instead of like the messed up code, whether it's ABCs, one, two, threes, upper and lower case, it's trying to connect to a phone number. Start looking around. Somebody's probably sitting in their car at the laptop and it's and they got their phone and they're getting your information. It was an uh, it was it did not work for the iPhone. It worked with the uh, Android. It was called Skimmer Scanner. It was an app, and uh, one of the detectives I work with uh, over here at Round Rock, uh, the Shell station on 620 has 16 gas pumps. He said he was taking 13 a week skimmers off that deal just using his phone. And that's what he would do, but he said once a month, he'd go check every single gas station that was in the city limits of uh, Round Rock, and he was getting hundreds of skimmers, 13 off one station. Uh, we have 16 gas stations here in Pflugerville, also within our, our ETJ. That means just once they're just like just right outside the city limits, but they're, they're here. I've asked for permission to uh, go to you know, once a month, let me just go and open up every one. See if there's a scammer. If there is, just take it off, break it, do whatever. Uh, because you have to send it off to DPS crime lab. A year later, I get a report of, hey, we found so-and-so's DNA on it. But then someone's got to pay for that testing and it's expensive testing. But at least get them off the pumps. But a lot of the gas station managers, uh, like 7-Eleven, those managers don't have the, the pumps. They're just responsible for the store. Somebody, another company owns the gas pumps. And they have their own people that come out and do it, check them once every three months. 
And if that all the clerks do in there, they go out there, if they run out of uh, receipt paper, they go out there, unlock it, put receipt paper on it. They don't know what the skimmers look like. Some of them do, because when I've gone to them and removed them, I'm going, if you see these, call me <laughs> and everything. And the 7-Eleven over here on Schultz Lane, that manager calls me about once a week, once every two weeks. He gets a lot of skimmers. Whoops. Yeah, they're pretty small devices. So that's one about the size of a cigarette lighter. Yeah. Okay, some scam prevention. Do your research before acting. Check a business name or address telephone number. Same thing with checks. Uh, there's a gentleman here. Uh, he he must have got on somebody's mailing list. He gets two or three fake checks, forged checks mailed to him a week. And he, there for a while, he was bringing them up to me to the PD going, I got another one. You're a Walmart mystery shopper. We're sending you $2,800. Here's your check. You know, and if I said, you know, and he just brings them to me and, go, and they're made out to him. But what they want him to do is go to the drive through deposit it. Now go inside the bank. Your bank wants you to wait two or three days, make sure business day, make sure it clears. But by law, they have to give you at least 50% of it if you want it, if you have that much money in your account to cover it. And so he would get 50% of it. Now he's supposed to go to Walmart buy if they gave him twenty eight hundred dollars they won't hey go buy take twelve hundred of it buy gift cards stay on the phone with me and read me the numbers off the back that guy gets that cash in seconds but they tell him take three hundred of it and buy you something nice two days later your bank calls you and says that check was no good you owe us you're responsible for it 100 percent of that value you're responsible but this guy knew it was a scam and did it he just brings them to me all the time and everything here's another one got another one officer dan here's some more here's some more and it's something else i mean but you'd be surprised i can run it'll say it's written on a bank uh first texas bank dallas texas i run the routing number no such number or it'll be to a bank in pennsylvania and then you look at the address and i go sir did you even look at the address he goes no i said i ran the address that's the, that says the address of the bank it's the dallas police department <laughs> Yeah. I said, they're having fun doing whoever's making these up. I've had one couple come up here to the PD going, you know, Hey, we got this check for 2,500 and bank told us it was fake, but they went ahead and gave us half the money. But you know, what do we do? And I go, go right back to the bank, give them back their money, be done with it. He and his wife got into an argument as they left the police department, they went to Walmart and split the money and went shopping. And then he calls me two days later going, Hey, I should listen to you. But my wife said, let's go shopping. <laughs> he wanted to blame her, <laughs> but I was going, no, it's, it happens. Watch these checks that people want to send to you. Never give personal information over the phone or internet, unless you know the website, it's somebody you've always done business with. Whoops. I'm sorry. I think we missed one there. I guess I was okay. On check fraud, how do they get your information? Checks are stolen from your car, your home, your mailbox. Checks are found in the trash. We, uh, they may want the information to help make a check. They find a one that you voided out and everything. Uh, way checks a whole lot work is the check is really only truly voided is if you, if you mail somebody a check, let's say you mail someone a check to Dale's Children's Hospital making a hundred dollar a month payment on a kid that got sick. Dale calls you and goes, Jane, last month's check didn't make it. And you're going, well, I got my carbon copy. I'll just call my bank, cancel that check, and I'll send you 200 next month. Dale's Children's Hospital says, that's fine. So she calls her bank. They charge her $35 to cancel that check. You got to do that for the rest of your life every six months. It's only canceled for six months, and then it becomes reactivated. You got to pay $35 every six months. Banks won't tell you that. <laughs> So what these folks were doing when they steal these checks, they wait six months. July 4th last year, that weekend, July 4th through the 7th, our mailbox, the drop box at Pflugerville Post Office got broke into. Six months later, I'm having all these hot check cases popping up. Because what happened was they took Jane's check that was made out to Dale's Children's Hospital for uh, $100, still has her good signature on it. But now they made it out to, let's say, Jose Ramirez, for 6,800, 
and they mail it to a friend named by that name to somewhere. A lot of more, but a lot of my, when I told you a lot of my cases involve Wells Fargo, they're all going to the Wells Fargo Bank at 212 12th Street, Minneapolis, South, South Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's where all those checks were going to all these different names. Banks were cashing them. Here's your cash. The other checks were going to the Bank of America at Henrico, Virginia. That's where my other cases go. But I say 80 to 85% of my cases are Wells Fargo Bank involved because a lot of times they just don't ask for all the ID. You don't have to have an account with them to cash a check. And it just keeps happening. And what's bad about that right now, I mean, I've had other members from my church who this has happened to when they mail a bill to the city of Fluville paying a water bill or something, somebody steals their check. All of a sudden it's being deposited in Florida at a Wells Fargo in Florida. I even got them on video. Judge gives me a warrant for him, but DA says, we'll wait till they come back to Texas. We will not extradite. And it just, <laughs> Safest way, if you're if you're mailing a check, mailing a payment, go to the post office, go inside, drop it off. Uh, they're getting stolen, so for a $15 lock, they're breaking into your, your neighborhood gas ones. Do not use these standalone mailboxes. Go to the post office. Highly recommend it, doing that. If you, let's say your bank card gets compromised, they say, hey, we're gonna send one to you. You'll get it in four to six business days. Say, no, send it to the bank. I'll come to the bank and pick it up. I know it's sometimes inconvenient, but having it sent to you, they'll break into your mailbox and get it. Or the box had, lock hadn't been broke, fixed. You know, it's easy for them to get it. <laughs> check fraud prevention, never mail checks using the standalone mailboxes. There we go. Always mail checks using boxes at the post office. You jumping ahead on it. <laughs> If you know the bank is sending you new checks, watch for them and get your mail immediately. Or if they're going to tell them to deliver it to the, po to the bank itself, go get them there. All right, just very, very quick review. Shred all documents before just throwing stuff away. Shred them. Mail, uh, check payments using boxes at the post office. Monitor your mail if it delivered directly to your home. Don't let it sit out there two or three days. Get it in a hurry. Review your debit card, credit card, and bank balances at least. It's, I know it says twice a week. Make it three. Do three. Or if it's not every day. My daughter is one of those. If you set a, you can even set a limit on your card where you want to be notified immediately when every time your card is being used. I know a lot of people set it at $10, $100. My daughter is so nitpicky on it. One penny. She'll be at Walmart buying you know, something, and then it's like her phone will go off. Yep, I guess I authorize it, let it go through. You know, every single time she's getting gas, it's the same thing. It, it, it helps. It helps. Uh, before I became a detective, before I got into fraud, I worked in community services. A lot did a lot of things like this. Uh, but it was, uh, uh, I was a victim of it of this and my wife going who are you sending eight hundred dollars worth of flowers to in georgia and i'm going it's not me <laughs> it's not me it happens never give personal information out over the phone in an email or text unless you absolutely know the, the individual don't open those emails when they're phishing because if you don't know them don't open it i i get on my personal phone i have a personal email then I have a work phone where I have to, I get this work related email, but my personal email, I bet I get a hundred junk email a day and I'll go through and I'll block them. It's where you can block that unsolicited stuff. But I get ones that say lose weight quickly, or, you know, you want a free gun, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's, it's like, they are just trying to get your information. If we're, if it's during like the lunchtime at the PD and a bunch of the detectives are sitting there in the conference room eating and somebody gets a spam caller and they're always coming to my, uh, work phone they come to my work cell phone i mess with them <laughs> i might use some language i shouldn't use but i mean i got one that kept me on the phone i kept him on the phone i knew i said okay i, I, I stalled him for maybe 20 25 minutes i thought okay at least i'm protecting somebody else he's wanting he's wanting to go pay for my college loan my student loan now, oh you can help me you bet well start going on well all i need is your credit now why do you need my credit card number you know so i give him a, a card number and he's going that didn't go through because i 
I'd look at mine and just go either up or down one number. And he's going, oh, that doesn't work. And I go, well, I must have misread it. And so I would do it again <laughs> like that. And then finally he goes, well, how much do you actually owe on your student loan? And I go, oh, 74 cents. He cussed at me and hung up. So it's like, <laughs> but it was, I, I had fun with him. <laughs> uh, your bank or credit card company will never call you asking you to verify your security information. They never will say, we just want to double check your pin. They're not going to do that. All right. Your bank will never text you uh, telling your account is, is locked and wants you to give out that information. They're never going to. Never pay for an item on Craigslist unless you have that item in hand. This happens all the time. We got a lot of these kids that want to sell stuff on Craigslist. They're going, hey, you can buy that new Xbox game. It's $1,500, but hey, I got it for sale for $500. Just give me, your, give me a, a gift card number, and, I'll, and I'll, get it. I'll meet you then, but I need the card number first. A lot of these kids work hard, get a little money, and then it's stolen just like that. Never accept a check for more. Oh, this is another good scam that is going on here. Never accept a check for more than the amount the individual is. Uh, I'll give you an example. Lady was selling bunk beds, $100. My boys were growing up. I'm getting rid of their bunk beds, $100. A guy calls, says, hey, I'm in California. I'm, I'm going to send you, uh, I'm going to send, I want to buy those. He goes, but I'm going to use a company check. And then they go, oh, hey, my boss made the company check too much. He made it for 1800 everything, but I'm going to send it to you. You just send me the balance back. People fall for it daily. This happens a lot. And then the bank calls them going, uh, you owe us <laughs> and everything. And yes, you do. You owe. And those, those are so hard to, to prove and to prosecute because somebody can call you and make it, and they call it spoofing, spoofing a number. They can make call you, make it look like it's the Travis County Sheriff's department calling you and saying there's a warrant for your arrest for a ticket back in 1983 that you forgot to pay when you got a ticket down there by the Capitol. You probably don't even remember it and everything, but hey, if you send it 500 bucks, we make it go away. And it happens. Spoofing numbers. Uh, we've had people even spoof the Fluorville Police Department's number sending out false claims like that. We do not take gift cards for payment. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. Unless you know the person, do not take a check for payment. Do not, unless you absolutely know them. If you did not win the lot, did not buy a lottery ticket, you did not win the lottery. A lot of people fall for that one. Never accept a job that requires you to send money to Western Union or through MoneyGram, Walgram, uh, Walmart MoneyGrams, all run through one bank in California. Everything, but what's bad about that if? Uh, like I had a person here wanted to buy a cat and it's called a Dan Munchkin cat. They have extra toes where they have real big paws. And she thought, Hey, I'm buying this cat. It's in Tennessee or it was somewhere up there buying this cat. Well, the person calls them back. They're buying the cat like for $400. Hey, your cat got sick. It's got a vet bill now of $1,600. We can't ship it to you until you pay it. This lady really wanted that cat. She pays it. They go, Oh, your cat's still sick. We're going to send a nurse with it. So you got to pay for the nurse's ticket. Send us the money. And so she does that and everything. So she never got her cat. Oh, I would have thought, man, I'm going to the pound. Get me a stray cat. <laughs> I'm going to bring her one. <laughs> but it's, she wanted this cat, but she's doing it through money grams. Oh, uh, uh, the wall grams, the, what they call the Walmart money, the wall grams. All I need is when I call you and say, hey, I need you to send me that. Give me the, the number of that receipt and I'll get it and I can go get my money. I can go to any Walmart that is touching in another state that's touching the state where I told you I was, where you, where you sent it. Like if I was telling you to send it to me here in Texas, I can go to New Mexico and get my money and you really don't know where you sent it. But you can't prosecute those because you're just not going to catch them. Oh, this one, we hadn't had this scam in quite a while. <laughs> How did an exile prince get your name anyway and want to just give you these millions? We did have that one a couple of years, but it's, it hadn't popped up in about two or three years. If someone calls you saying they are from the federal agency and they have a warrant for your arrest, and if you send money, they will make, you will not go to jail, hang up. Just hang up on them. If somebody calls you and says they're an IRS, hang up. If they call and they say they're Microsoft, or 
uh, Social Security Administration and we got a warrant for you, hang, just hang up. Document the number. Uh, I, we got a program called Clear uh, and I can use to run the number and 100% of the time I will say they're bandwidth numbers. Bandwidth number is, it's kind of like you see in movies, they talk about burner phones. It's just where they, they buy a phone. There's no record of who it goes to, but that's just good for 200 minutes. So they'll use it for that long. And they, they can tell you, make up anywhere where they're out of and everything. And, or they can bounce the, you know, uh, using just these cheap bandwidth phones. They just buy it for so many minutes and the number's gone. Everything, but that's just hang up, hang up on them. Shred, shred old paperwork and then the bits of advice like that going to the post office to mail it do it do it and I don't mean the, the drive up boxes get out go inside our city has not kept up with the size that our post office is drive by that post office at 1 30 that box will be full and be mail sticking out of it and you will see people still drive up there shove and drive off and mail will drop I have parked my squad car there, turned on my lights, gone inside and said, hey, it's full and you got mail on the ground. I said, I'm just trying to help myself. <laughs> you know, so I'll be getting cases in a month and, you know, and they're going, we can't open it till four, or go get it till 430 by law. Yeah, they're wrapping plastic when they're going trying to, because uh, they did at one time, if you look on the corner of the building, there was a game camera pointed down on it. That, they started doing that after the July 4th, just trying to catch somebody to put a what you watch deer with <laughs> they put one on the side of the building but all you're doing now is you're just videotaping somebody where you can't even read their plate you know it's it's, it's something else a any questions so i think that was about it yeah yes ma'am <laughs> now i have seen so many of these scam letters uh the, the walmart mystery shopper is real no, they, they give you instructions on what to do. Call us. Keep us on the phone when you walk up to the bank and because they'll tell you, hey, we're wanting you just to test. They're wanting you to test your bank and test your Walmart. Go deposit this check. We'll tell you what to say. Keep us on the phone. Just put it on speaker. Go through the drive-thru. If someone says, well, why are you buying all these gift cards? Just tell them it's none of their business or tell them it's your grandson's birthday. They're, they're, they won't, they're telling you. And the tellers are even trained now where they, because there's even signs at the checkouts going, have you been contacted? Have you been asked to buy so many gift cards? That's a scam. You go, and so they, they'll, if they see somebody buying $3,000 in gift cards and $500 increments, they're going to ask you, but some of the, but the folks are following the instructions going, it's none of your business. What I do with my money, you're fixing to give it away. <laughs> you're fixing to give it away. It happens. And these checks that I've seen that this gentleman brings me weekly, I got a big box full of checks. <laughs> you know, I, I used to tease everybody going, I'm learning from these bad guys how to supplement my retirement. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I haven't heard if they've started since the hell storm. I know there's been a lot of roofers in town and like that. Ask them if they're going around soliciting, they need to have a permit with the city. I can do a whole nother class on how to make yourself a harder target. Uh, sometime if y'all want me to come back and talk about it, making your home, a, it, it might make you a lot of honeydew jobs around the house, but it's, it's, uh, uh, it's ways you can do to make yourself a harder target. You know, one simple thing, give you one simple thing to do on your front door, the, on your front door, you got your strike plate that's on the wall what the deadbolt goes into all right and that thing's held with two little bolts right there by building code and everything to make that door safe that screw is supposed to be three inches long so it goes into the stud i'll bet you a cup of coffee and an apple fritter from shipley's because they make the big ones <laughs> i bet it's a half inch long or bigger it just goes into that stream where a second grader could kick your door in it's supposed to be a three-inch screw. You go and buy those things at Home Depot, they all come with the little screws. So the builders, they use them. They, you got to go buy the longer screws. But I can show you the different things you can do to make your home a harder target where make them go back to Austin. Make the bad guys go back to Round Rock to break into homes. We don't want them here. <laughs> yeah, I, I can show you just simple things to do. 
lighting is one of the cheapest things. Just having good lights, security lighting, motion detector lights, just something to make them go. They don't, they don't want to do anything where they're going to be seen. You, I can just show you different, different, different things. We're, and we're hoping to bring that, that program back where we have a uniformed officer come to your house. That's a crime prevention specialist. We have, a, I think there's two of us at the PD that do it, uh, officer, uh, Lieutenant Chet Baranca and myself are crime prevention specialists. We just walk around your house with you going, here's what I would recommend. If you do what we recommend, and then we come back and you say, hey, I did everything you recommend, we can sign off. It gives you about 10 to 15% discount on your homeowner's insurance. But yes, we're hoping to get that back started. Yes. Oh, yes. Simple things. Any, anything else? Yes, ma'am. It's a scanner. They would probably do anything to probably get some information through there how they could do it so yes i'm serious they, they will they may say they're sprint t-mobile any, any legitimate company somebody that we, we've trust or somebody we've done business with for years or have heard about for years check them out if they give you an address you may need to look or if they give you an account number they want stuff sent to or in a routing number hey check it first one i just had happen yesterday where i'm waiting on information so i can get grand jury subpoenas for the records a uh, victim called a place where she was leasing a car and she was, Hey, I just want the, the payoff on it so I can pay this off and return the vehicle. And they told her and she goes, okay. And then they said, we'll, we'll be in touch with you for you to send the money. Somebody hacked and she was doing this by email. Somebody hacked the email and they go, Hey, here's where you need to send it. And she was, she was talking to a person when, uh, emailing the, the, the place in San Antonio. She said, here's who I was talking to. Here's her, the emails back. Well, somebody hacked it in between and they didn't know. And they said, Hey, here's where you need to do it. Well, she sent the $4,500 and 71 cents and yeah, $471 and nine cents. It went to a lady's account in Rhode Island. But I said, okay, just send me this and everything. Then what I will do, I do a, since she had the lady's routing number, the account number had her name. All I need is a grand jury subpoena for the bank records just to verify that I can get a warrant. I love my job. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. They used to have what they call a do not call list, but it, it didn't work as well because all folks had to do was they just turn around and change one digit of the number. When they get that bandwidth number, they just change one number and call you again. That's all they got to do. All right. Well, yes, that's all I have. If, if ever y'all need some, a topic on something else, if it's home security surveys, I, we do them also even on, uh, uh, I call it holiday safety, like what not to do and what to do during Christmas. You know, like how many of y'all put that great big Christmas tree up in front of a big old window? Just so everybody can see it. Bad guys like presents too. <laughs> you know, so I mean, there, there's just all sorts of things you can do. Uh, one one simple thing is like if you get that brand new tv don't go put that big box out by your trash can you know because all you're doing is saying hey look what we have in here and you'd be surprised during christmas you can drive around the neighborhood and see who got the new tv <laughs> uh our citizens on patrol we're doing them uh our our city's gotten too big where we can't it's i loved the uh i call it close patrol or uh or even a vacation watch. If you were leaving, going on vacation, what this was is if uh, you would call us, dispatch would fill out a one-page deal going, okay, could uh, any cars going to be, okay, when, when are you leaving? When are you getting back? Because we want you to call us when you get back. Uh, that way we don't come up there with a gun drawn, you know, going, who who are you? But like if there's your husband's truck's going to be left in the driveway, it's license plate 123ABC, it's a white Dodge pickup. Uh, we're going to leave a light on to the left of the door where it makes it look like somebody's here. Their neighbor's sitting out the trash and doing that. And then that way, you know, then our officers on all shifts would be coming by checking on it. And then our citizens on patrol would help keep eyes on it. And if you're telling a trusted neighbor, you know, do that, like, you know, we want to know if little Johnny is going to be mowing the yard. We don't want to scare little Johnny, you know, and just, uh, we used to do this when, uh, people were going out of town, but their high school daughter is going to be there at the house. You know, and little Johnny drives that red Ford Ranger pickup. And we don't, he shouldn't be on the block. You know? So we made sure 
you know, we could do that when we were a smaller town. We could help keep a closer patrol. But now when we get to work, sometimes we're already behind. Uh, being a de detective, I'm always having to work behind because it's the crime's already happened. If somebody's not checking their bank account two or three times a week, but they're only checking it when they get that monthly statement, bad guy's already got a 30 day head start, you know, and then uh, if I want to go get secure, if, if, if uh, a lot of times the, if they stole your credit card information, they were going to Home Depot, Target or Best Buy. And they may not have video after 30 days. And they say you waited 29 to report it. And then by the time I got it, it might've been another day or two. I go to go get it. It's gone. That's why we want to jump on it in a hurry. Banks will have video forever. But certain, like if it's used at a mom and pop store, a, a Circle K or, you know, a little convenience store, it might be three days and the video is gone. Just depends on how much they spent on their computer system. They're, you know, sometimes it's gone over 30. Sometimes it's gone in three. Sometimes it's, you know, it just depends what they spent on it. When my, when my, uh, when our information got hacked, my, I, I saw it on the phone and it said 99 cents. And I thought, well, my wife must have downloaded some workout music or something for her when she goes for a run or riding her bike or something. So I saw, I thought it was, but I said, okay. And then there's a couple other 99 cent ones. And it was like, wow. The next thing we know, I said, hey, we just got paid, but we're already broke. <laughs> I said, what happened? You know, just, you know, just like, you know, and that's one reason I got into fraud. I love it. My, my wife does a lot of stuff with, uh, uh, she got one of those cricket, one of those, laminators it's a it's a arts and crafts deal you know, when she told me she wanted a cricket and i go what do you want with a cheap phone you know just you know, like, but when when somebody one of my buddies told me if you buy your wife that just kiss her goodbye she's going to be in that her office all day long and she loves that thing but her card gets hacked three times a year uh just because uh her doing business online and it may not be where she went to an email, whatever, but maybe a company she was doing business with, uh, it got hacked, got, got her information, you know, everything. And we start seeing, you know, char uh, a charge for 46 cents or 54 cents at some town we never heard of up north. And it's like, hey, I call her and I go, hey, was this you? She goes, no. So I call the bank and I go, and I go, and, you know, and I said, you know, they got to, they know me just because I go in and I work fraud and I work a lot of forgery cases, uh, those uh, check forgeries, uh, I can walk in there and say, I just want to see you know, on our account whose card it is. That way I can say it was your card. <laughs> yeah. Mine hadn't been gotten yet. Hers has like eight or nine times where she has to get a new card all the time. You know. uh, okay, let me get, and also, when you're going to these gas pumps and using your debit card, use it as a credit. Do not ever use your PIN. Use it as a credit every time. When you put it on some of these newer pumps, like the one at Murphy's, like now, it's going to keep your card for a little bit. And then you can hit bypass pin, but then you have to put your ship code. That's fine. You're not putting your pin in there. Everything. Do not, you when you use it. Uh, what I even recommend to some folks, you can either use your bank or I don't work for HEB, but <laughs> uh, I always say go get you an HEB card that you can put $200 on. Use that to get gas going out to eat. And then next time you go in there and buy groceries, put a little more cash on it, everything. And that way, if somebody hacks it, they're just getting what's on that card. They're not getting your bank card that has your checking information. Your bank has those type of cards, but they're going to charge you five, ten dollars a month just to use it. You can go get an HEB card; <laughs> they're free, and just put as much as you want on it. And then next month, go put a little bit more. And then that way, if that, you know, and just keep a couple of hundred on it for gas and going out to eat. And then every time you go get groceries, put a little bit more on it. But there, there's my information. If y'all ever need anything, just give us a shout. I, I, that's my direct line to my desk. The main number of the police department is 6,700, but just change the last two numbers to 44, and that will go to my desk directly. My job is to whatever I can do to protect y'all, and it makes my job easier too.